What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Retro Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today. And today we have the October 2023 Pulse International Airport update for you guys. I really hope you guys are excited for today's videos. Today we have a very exciting Pulse International Airport update in store for you guys. We got some major frequency changes, some new aircraft changes, some seasonal flights turning into year-round flights, and all kinds of fun items to dive into in today's Pulse International Airport update. I really hope you guys are excited for this. Without any further delay, let's just go ahead and get started as we have so much to cover. Plenty of news and everything at the end, as always, with our Tulsa updates. But let's just go ahead and start right here by coming in hot here to gate Bravo number one. And let me see if I get macro mode to not do what it does because it is certainly a frustrating camera mode. So really excited for this massive update. Like I said, let's go ahead and get started. Starting right here, gate Bravo number one coming in hot with Southwest Airlines on their Boeing 737-700 right here. This aircraft's currently making a non-stop service coming in from the Chicago Midway International Airport after making a non-stop service earlier today and from Dallas Love Field. So certainly some really cool frequencies there uh both are uh well midway's double daily and then uh dallas love is four daily so standard frequencies there we love to see it we got a big change coming up for southwest here that i'm excited to assess so let's just keep moving so we can get there uh, this was a realistic special leave that came in uh, yesterday as of the time of filming. October 4th would have been the day. Right here we have the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-800. This aircraft in the Tennessee One Special Livery. This aircraft is currently making a non-stop service today coming in from the Houston Hobby International Airport after a non-stop flight earlier today in from uh, St. Louis. So really good to see both those routes also both double daily so glad they're doing a great job there really awesome to get tennessee one here especially with how nice the display is really nice model and check out my uh, model aircraft instagram rra models to check out the full pictures of these if you're curious i need to get back to consistent posting on there but common theme throughout today's airport update you'll be able to tell that i've been super busy so uh projects in the works but really excited for it and it'll be absolutely awesome so 737 800 tennessee one non-stop service day heading back out to st louis after coming in from houston hobby Alrighty, everybody, here we go for big change number one. Right here we have the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-700 with Skimitar winglets. This aircraft's coming in from Austin Bertram International Airport, and now it's going to be heading out on not just one, but now two daily services to Las Vegas, Nevada. Southwest kicking it up to double daily for Vegas. This is a big, big, big get for Tulsa. Really excited about this. They've only conducted this one other time in my research. That was uh, December through February 2019 to 2020. So it is really exciting to see this now be double daily. Uh, uh, this is a big move uh, if you don't know las vegas has been a focal point for southwest's network they are expanding there uh, rapidly and not only tulsa but many other destinations are getting some really impressive frequency boost and it's awesome to see now tulsa double daily one flight leaves around 7 30 a.m and the other flight le leaves around uh, depending on the season 5 to 7 p.m so really excited about this i believe this will be a year-round change and this is really really exciting only in the past it's ever been like double daily on sundays so it's really exciting to see this now double daily all uh, all week really really great change adding yet another frequency chicago midway's double daily has now moved into a 7 p.m arrival and the not flight goes out to dallas love field that was previously the overnight so now las vegas is the uh, fifth overnight which uh we've been overnighting five and as you can see we're pretty much brimmed here at the tulsa international airport during our evening ops so we're really exciting with vegas here this is awesome a great change certainly uh taking advantage of that opportunity before any other airlines would come in and try to still like spirit or frontier i really like the move and really big for southwest We'll talk about that more at the end of the update, but really, really, really great start there. And Austin also doing well with their daily service. So we love to see that, and that's absolutely fantastic. This is a remote stand Bravo number seven, where we have this Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-700. This aircraft's currently making a non-stop service today coming in. Let's see uh, the destination, de destinations I'm missing, excuse me. This aircraft is currently coming in right now from Denver International Airport, and now we'll be heading out in the morning over the Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. Both those also doing very well, three and one daily respectively. Certainly really glad to see the progression of both those. And excited to see where it goes from here. Who knows, maybe Phoenix will be up to double daily. It's been a very long time since they've conducted that. So absolutely would love to see it. But it'll just be a matter of time until we find out. So looking very good there. And that will get towed in the gate B5 once Vegas heads out. So looking very forward to that. Uh, I will reposition over here. Apologies about the shade in advance, but I definitely want to get our uh, really good lighting here on this particular aircraft. That's going to be the Breeze Airways Airbus A220-300. This aircraft is currently coming in from New Orleans International Airport, and now we'll be heading back out there with a breeze through continuing on to the Orlando International Airport. Got to fly the inaugural. It was really, really fun. They did a great job, Tulsa International Airport and New Orleans International Airport, having a uh, really fun launch with various items given away and just overall great celebration for 
for the uh, re-inaugural service, which is absolutely awesome. First flight outbound did really well. I think there was only like 10 empty seats or something very reasonable. So that was really, really exciting to see. I was really impressed. And the uh, outbound on Fridays, inbound on Mondays have been very good as expected. Really a uh, little over what I expected, which has been really awesome. Uh, I also did a survey. About 50 people breezed on through to Orlando on the inaugural. So if you do the math there, about 70 to 80 passengers heading on to New Orleans and then 50 on to Orlando. So certainly really good. Uh, it certainly definitely changed my perspective a little bit on, uh, I was very disappointed initially when they got rid of the nonstop. It's not quite as bad now reflecting on it, considering the fact that uh, it's a pretty easy stop, you know, just real quick people get on then you keep going so but if it does bring back new Orleans, new orleans service which uh, we don't have any other airline on that of course i certainly am in favor of it so certainly works for me glad to see it's doing really well it'll be interesting to see how this route progresses through the fall and of course into the winter months it'll be very interesting but currently blocked all the way out through april which is how far their schedule extends so that's been very good and uh, really glad excited to see uh, where the future holds right here on this service so looking very forward to it and it's going to be absolutely awesome so glad to see breeze doing really well It'll be interesting to see where they go from here. Great airline, looking very forward to it. But nevertheless, like I said, this aircraft's heading over to New Orleans. Uh, let me actually get some taxing aircraft real quick because we're in a really good light right here. Uh, currently taxing in from the Denver International Airport on the second uh, evening service. We have the United Airlines CRJ 900 operated on the behalf of Mesa Airlines in their house livery, of course. This has been the 11 p.m. arrival. They've had this aircraft. They've had a Skywest 175. They've bounced all around. They've even had a couple of CRJ 200s. Yuck, I'm just kidding. But uh, just during a little transition that I had a few 200s. But glad to see this doing really well. He'll head out to Houston in the morning. They've also been operating quite a few there so glad to see that they've been doing good there with that and we'll talk a little bit more about Denver once we get to the uh, mainline offering for this month let me scoot on around right here for this beautiful new model one of three for today's airport update this is the American Airlines Airbus E321 Neo the second release by Gemini Jets I was uh, very surprised to see how good this model came out if I can get my camera to go into the mode that I would like it to so you can see what I'm referring to here uh, really, really nice model. Gemini Jets did a really good job on this one. So this is currently uh, taxing out the runway two sit, or sorry, runway eight, which we've actually been using quite a bit here lately, which has been really cool. So that's kind of what I'm representing there with the Mesa. This aircraft's taxing in and uh, or taxing out rather for a maintenance flight. We haven't been getting these lately, but I couldn't pass on the opportunity to use this model. It's a really nice one. Gemini Jets, like I said, did a spectacular job on it. So uh, mainly been getting a 737s and 787s lately, but I uh, certainly wanted to throw this in here because they do still come in every now and again. So really cool to see this. And again, this aircraft is going to be heading over uh, on a uh, flight, uh, just going to be doing a test flight around the area. Not completely realistic, but I just couldn't resist not throwing it in here with this being a Tulsa maintenance base and everything. So thought it was too good of an opportunity. So of course, we're going to take advantage of that. Hello United, man, we're gonna be seeing more new United airplanes into the fleet, of course. If you didn't see, United ordered an additional 100 new aircraft, to be particular, 110. So the breakdown of that is 50 of those will be Boeing 787 Dreamliners, and I believe around approximately uh, 60 of those will be Airbus A321 Neos to go along with what they already have on order. So now United has 800 airplanes on order. They're gonna keep taking over. Uh, really, really looking forward to their progression. They are certainly working on being my favorite airline really quick, uh, just because of the effort that they've demonstrated and expect a, a more comprehensive video on that in the near future. I'm planning to do that. So, uh, but nevertheless, we have a bunch to talk about with their Tulsa operations. Let's get started. Uh, currently getting towed in right here after the sec first daily, first evening service rather, Houston service, we have this United 175. This aircraft, like I said, came in from Houston around eight o'clock and now it's getting towed in here because of course we don't have enough jet bridges here at Tulsa. So hopefully we can get some more soon, but for the moment uh, we are using multiple planes here at the hard stands, this being one of them. So this is a good problem to have, I would argue. At beat 10, take a look at this. This is a regularly scheduled service. Not gonna be a substitution this time around. This is the United Airlines Boeing Sub-37 MAX 9 coming in from the Houston George Bush Intercontinental International Airport. Glad to see the MAX 9 here this month. The uh, un unfortunate news that I have to report on is that next month they'll be going to four regional jets to kick off the uh, bulk of fall. I can't completely blame them. The evening flight, first off, I would have went down to a 319 to start. I wouldn't just jumped from, they've been doing 739s on this pretty consistently throughout 2023 from my regulation, but I wouldn't have jumped completely down the regionals on that evening flight. They just went ahead and dropped it all the way to, I think, three CR9s and one 145. It's unfortunate. I 
get it kind of. I'm sure that they have more place to eat the main line. It's not just Tulsa, Oklahoma City. It's also receiving the same treatment, which is really unfortunate. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of places such as Florida and more popular travel destinations during this time of the year. Uh, hopefully we get it back around March. I mean, that's my assumption of when they're gonna bring back the main line. It's currently blocked all the way out through next summer with no main line, which is a little concerning. They have not done that in a very long time. I do think that they'll will be getting the Houston mainline back probably sometime early next year in the March April time frame not really early but sometime around probably Q2 at this or yeah Q2 at this point considering that uh, they are going to pull it for sure in November and likely December and beyond. If we do get back in January, I'll be impressed. Hopefully we do. At least we will be rocking our Denver mainline, which is uh, honestly right now the most important one. I'll explain why here in a second. This is very unfortunate though, as we've been really strong with this since uh, Q2 of 2022. So it's been around two years since we've had inconsistencies here. Again, a 319 I think would have been perfect here, but what can you do? It's not just us. It's just a, more of a broad change rather than something Tulsa did. So. Uh, hopefully we get it back at some point. Uh, we'll talk about that more at the end of the video as well. But nevertheless, we are not losing mainline. Thank goodness it is unfortunate to lose that uh, one mainline there. That's a really big part in the mainline. But luckily here we do have our consistent mainline as of late. And it's been uh, not completely consistent, but I'll explain why. Right here at game number Bravo number eight, we have this United Airlines Airbus 819-100 coming in from the Denver International Airport. So uh, yeah, mainline been going very strong here on Denver on that eight o'clock arrival, which has been a really good time frame for it. They flopped it with the 11 o'clock which i think has been a really great change most people especially during this time of year of course like to get back at a really reasonable time this flight certainly provides that opportunity and they're going to brim the 319 at this time of day so really good change and then of course they have their partner in crime the mason 900 coming in on the evening service or the really late flight for our late night owls so i'm a big fan of it uh really good so with regards to the denver main line this will be flopping over next month to 737 800 so we're not completely losing out as we are getting more seats here significantly more i think an additional 30 seats or so on this flight which would be great so again at least they gave us something back in return for that it's going to be exciting to see the 738 back here looking very forward to that and they'll bounce around on the main line but it's currently blocked all the way out through next august i think as far as the schedule goes so really big fan of the uh, denver main line it's been awesome hope to get back on it very soon and united doing a really good job with their ops here so sorry that the sub dates kind of progressing long i try not to make them so long but i just can't ever stop talking so this is kind of my uh, forte after all with regards to the knowledge so hopefully that is helpful to each and every one of you uh, this is actually completely wrong. Something actually happened today. So I'm actually going to pull a audible right here. It's just the reality of um, busyness. I need to find one airplane here really quick. Let me see if I can find it because this is kind of important to um, uh, comprehend what we're doing here in today's airport update. So I hope you enjoyed the mess that I have in my room uh, because I need to find one particular aircraft. I found it because there was a really, really cool substitution today. And this was set up before the substitution. So uh, this was pretty whack. So we need to get this in here. I probably need to take a picture of this as well to have it documented. So yes, this happened today at the time of filming and this was pretty crazy. I'm sorry, uh, let me actually move the table. Let me just get reorganized here real quick. Okay, welcome back everybody. Right here we have this United Airlines Airbus A319-100. So yes, another A319. This actually docked up at eight, but for the sake of what we're doing here, we'll just put it here at six and let me get the field truck in a little bit better of a spot. There we go. This aircraft coming in for Chicago here, a really crazy um, substitution. I don't know what happens. So typically this flight's always a 175 for Chicago, double daily right now this month. But uh, they subbed in a 319. It came in from Chicago and went on to Houston. Again, no idea what happened. Really, really cool. Uh, they brimmed it too. The Chicago flight, I didn't have many seats open. I think I had maybe 20 seats open. So I think it was a substitution. They may have had it in there from the start, but I think they possibly could have oversold Chicago so bad to the point where they had to do this. And uh, speaking of which, they don't have an aircraft really between the 76 seaters to the A319. So they may have got it so good to the point where they oversold it this bad. So that's really, really encouraging if that was the case. But if it was something else, who knows? Uh, really, really cool to see. This is the only second time this has ever really happened where we've got mainline from Chicago, which is really cool. So hopefully uh, this might be a new normal at some point. Wichita does get that overnight 319 from Chicago. So it'd be great to see this. Uh, especially if American keeps reducing their frequencies. They, uh, I'll talk about that more once we get there, but uh, I think that there's certainly potential for this to be a mainline flight in the future, but I don't want to do too much wishful thinking as we really need to get Houston back first. So nevertheless, looking really great though and looking forward to seeing what happens there. So that's really awesome. 
And then gate number B4, I still think this looks kind of odd considering this really should be a United in my opinion. But here's the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 MAX 8 parking over here at our common use gate. This aircraft came in from Orlando International, which is finally back for, uh, I don't really think it'll be much of a seasonal service at this point because it's scheduled from now as far as the Southwest schedule goes next April, or sorry, next June. So if they only uh, terminate it for the summer months, that's completely fine. But really great to get this back in the schedule. It is uh, Saturday, Sunday this month, which is absolutely awesome. So really cool to see that. This is what we have right here. I'm sure they're brimming it. Hopefully we get some new statistics out very soon so I can inform you of which, uh, how all of it's doing, but uh, the main numbers were really great. So. I can only imagine what they're doing right now. So looking really good. Plenty of activity over here at the Bravo Concourse. It is certainly going very well. Glad to see Orlando back. And uh, that is quite the lineup right there. Imagine if we could see that on the regular. Uh, no, not all three. Those were on the ground at once, but still crazy. Think that all of them were on the ground within one day. That was really, really cool. Okay, let me bounce on over here as we have even more significant changes, uh, much more permanent changes, in fact. And this is a, a really exciting lineup of aircraft over here. So let me see if I can get them all in good light. Sorry, I'm not trying to make too, or let me just readjust one more time. Apologies, guys. Alrighty, what a lineup right here. We'll get into the bottom two here in a second. That will take some time to explain as that is a massive change from what we've seen previously. But let's just go ahead and get started right here at gate alpha number three where we have plenty of change in and of itself, arguably more of a change. Right here we have the Allegiant Air Airbus E319-100. This aircraft's coming in from Tampa, St. Petersburg International Airport. This service is now year round. Uh, really, really cool. This is the first time that they've ever done it year round. I'm really looking forward to it. They brimmed the outbound flight. In fact, the inbound flights uh, coming in at the time of recording this and the outbound I think only has like 15 empty seats they did a really great job so yeah about time <laughs> I have to say so uh, if this is what we get in return for not getting Sarasota and Phoenix Mesa back I'm all for it as it's going to do really well so uh, 319 perfect aircraft choice as well I think this fits really well coming in on Thursday and Sunday evenings they're going to do a really good job with this flight and Allegiant now has four year-round flights and then uh, Destin's still rocking all the way till the end of this month and then that will come back next summer and of course Vegas Los Angeles and Orlando complimenting the way now with Tampa year round. So how awesome the core routes here for Allegiant. I'm hopeful that they uh, make an expansion announcement soon. I think it's about time. We will see what happens and hopefully I have some good news to report on in the next update. Maybe we'll have to see, but uh, with how we've been progressing right now, it is certainly possible. So looking forward to it and it's going to be absolutely awesome, but just getting Allegiant back year round and Saturday, uh, Orlando service coming back from Southwest. We talked about the changes over there with um, the Las Vegas frequency. Really, really, really great month here. And the crazy part is this is just a portion of it. Uh, I just can't believe the progression right now. And we're about to get into a really, really cool segue right here as you're about to see. So let me get this uh, 321 in a little bit better light. And this is, these two are, uh, I would say, you know, everything we've talked about so far has been a significant change, but with regards to what we're really used to seeing here at Tulsa International Airport, this is probably the biggest change to date as this is absolutely surreal to see right here. You are currently seeing two American Airlines Airbus E321s docked up at gate Alpha 5 and Alpha 7 respectively. And no, these are not substitutions. This is the real deal. These are regularly scheduled flights and uh, I cannot believe that we're to this point. But the fact that we have two of these overnighting right now is unbelievable. This is crazy. So let's just go ahead and get started at Alpha 5. Brand new into the lineup, we have this American Airlines Airbus A321 with Sharklets. This aircraft's coming in from the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. DFW now facilitating a daily Airbus A321 in conjunction with all the other mainline services they are operating. What a talent show. It is really exciting to see the Airbus A321 here. This is a pretty big increase, a jump of about 20 seats from the 737. Really, really cool to see this now. With regards to DFW overnight, I think they're overnighting this and then they have a really clever system. So I believe they have a nine, eight or nine o'clock flight that comes in on a 737. And then I think on Thursday, Friday and Sundays, they have a 12 a.m. arrival, which I think is really genius so they can get you capitalize as much as possible. That's more of a low cost tactic, but I think it makes a really good sense here for American to fully utilize their planes and not just fly empty planes. They're doing that on a couple other services this month as well. Really, really good change. I really like it, really smart. They're also making a couple of other changes, uh, really minor, but I think that will make a heck of a difference. But flight was completely brimmed. There were not many empty seats at all. It departs at 6 a.m. in the morning. Really smart. Um, I just, I'm really impressed. I'm very impressed from what we've seen previously. 
and Americans willing to do this. Uh, that uh, Thursday, Friday, Mon Sunday change is really just as impressive as this, to be honest. But I think we're here for the capacity. They're doing really well. They also consolidate a little bit during the daytime. So I think this is a really good use of the aircraft. And I'm really, really excited to see how this does in the future. It's so far been all sharklets. So um, they have slightly different seats, but they're all interchangeable. So I'm sure we'll get some fence tips at some point. They were running a 321 early in the morning, uh, all of September. I, I, they were just flipping back and forth between a 320 and a 321 on that flight. Actually, a 319 and a 321, depending on the day, which is another tactic that uh, very similar to that Southwest uh, Tuesday, Wednesday consolidation and Allegiant, kind of similar concept there. A video for another time, but really impressive to see. Now, I know those were coming in pretty consistently, but this is really big to get this here. So not just one, but now we have two American Airlines Airbus 8 through 21s. Now, keep in mind, guys, I know, especially for the viewers that have been watching these updates for a while, you know, but Tulsa does not get 8 21s regularly. So the fact that we're here now is awesome. This American Airlines Airbus 8 through 21 with fence tips and CFM engines coming in from the Charlotte Douglas International Airport. What a jump from the 737. Not only this, but the... Uh, afternoon flight is not a CRJ 700 anymore. It's an Airbus E320. What a jump. Really, really cool. I did the math. It was a 27% uh, capacity increase, which uh, for a route that's already established is really, really, really impressive, especially for a legacy route like this on American. Uh, so 320 and 321 daily, that is up from a CRJ9 and a 737-800 previously. Now with regards to this Airbus E321 service, it was brimmed. Uh, all the seats were occupied. It was very, very impressive to see. I think there may have been a few open, but very limited. Again, these hold like 196, I think. Uh, no, it's 190. Neo's 196. But the fact that um, their brimming this is just unbelievable to see. Again, uh, all, every day of the week. Now on Tuesdays, they're bringing it in at 8 p.m. Normally it comes in at 10. On Tuesday, they're bringing it in at 8, which at Tuesday is a much less travel day in regards to demand. So really smart choice, uh, but American. Really, really good tactics. They went to work in the drawing boards um, over the summer whenever they uh, decided they were gonna do this. And this is a really healthy change. Uh, it's gonna be awesome seeing this. I'm hopefully get a lineup of both of them right next to each other. Uh, uh, I'll just go ahead and say tomorrow that's uh, having another activity coming up. So looking very forward to it. So truck hopeful to get both these right next to each other. But man, what a talent show and a half to have two 321s on the ground. It's just crazy to see. Charlotte's always been a 737. Um, when they made that permanent change in like 2017 or 18, whenever it was. So the fact that we're up to this now is exciting. And uh, into even um, December, they have the 323, 21. And then January and February, they have now a CR9 and a 321, which is really cool. I did not think they were gonna do that. So capacity is there, folks, and we are very excited to see it. And I'm sorry, this update, I've ranted way too long, but that was the bulk of our changes. It's really cool to see. And we have some additional uh, news to talk about going forward as well. This is American Airlines, folks. 737 coming in from Dallas, Fort Worth International Airport. We'll say that's a Thursday, why not? So he's coming on the 12 a.m. service. I won't elaborate too much since uh, I went into plenty of detail, but Dallas doing really well. We love the effort and that's absolutely awesome. Uh, getting pulled into the hard stand right here. We have this American Eagle Ember 175 coming in from the New York Gordia International Airport. Flight's doing really well. They're going to have to get it figured out really quick as they're going to have competition from Delta Airlines next summer. So looking forward to it, but I uh, can't appreciate our LaGuardia service enough. Really, really cool one. Hope to get on it very soon. Really great flight. That's absolutely awesome. And then we have this American Ember 170 operated for Envoy here in from Chicago O'Hare. Uh, very similar to the Dallas service. So, every, or sorry, going into the winter, what they'll do. Uh, right now, it's currently double daily. But what they'll do going into the winter is have a daily flight come in in the afternoon. And then on Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays, they'll have a evening overnight. So a really interesting tactic from American, but I think it's gonna work really well. It's pretty much like integrating a low cost carrier into American. That's pretty much what we're talking about. So yeah, unfortunate that they're down the one daily in the winter there. But again, you have to think about all these new services that we've got. That would include Washington, Reagan, New York, Gordia, Phoenix, Los Angeles, um, all the capacity on Charlotte as well is a great uh, pointer as well. And then uh, uh, double daily the Phoenix as well. So that is really taking a bunch from Chicago. So it's understandable. Um, maybe sometime it will really bounce back up. But And then United's doing really well in their Chicago too. It's not that America's not. They're just sampling what they have and uh, certainly getting after that target. So, uh, But they're doing really good there and certainly glad to see what they're doing best there. So that's absolutely fantastic. We'll have some more American here in a moment. Just, I knew this updates went pretty long at this point. And uh, it's been a busy one though. We've had a bunch of major changes. Not one of those typical, you know, 
February, nothing going on, and we've had some major changes, so understandable. Okay, so on your left, we have the Delta Connection Ember Ear Day-170 filling in for the Ember 175. Not going to have to keep saying that much longer. Thank you, Jim Nye Jets. I'm so excited for the 175. It will be huge. We'll talk about that more in a uh, slower update. But nevertheless, this 170 is currently coming in from the Salt Lake City International Airport. Double daily. Very consistent. We love the effort. They're doing really well there. So glad to see that right there. Alrighty, sorry about that, everybody. But nevertheless, proceeding on here to get out before we have this Delta Airlines Boeing 717-200. New model number two of three of the airport update the antenna just makes this model i know it's a really small detail and it is a little bit big in proportion to what it should be but man it just looks so good that for something different i absolutely love this model great one to have so glad to have it and this will be a focal point here of the tulsa international airport updates going forward nevertheless this is coming in for the atlanta hartsfield jackson international airport such aviations airport really glad to see this aircraft here once again it is three daily 717s and two CRJ 900s, which compared to what they've done previously, that is a frequency upgrade uh, post pandemic. So that's absolutely awesome. I think they're doing really well here. Glad to see that they got quite a few 717s on that. And it's absolutely awesome to see the success that they've had with that service. So excited to see where it goes from here. Really excited for the new New York Gordia service on Delta. I think that'll be a really key component for them. And hopefully we'll get more new services on Delta, notably, hopefully Minneapolis at some point. We will see. But nevertheless, really glad to get LaGuardia, glad to see Delta uh, trending up and certainly looking great there. So what a beautiful plane. New model number two. So glad to have it in the fleet. Really critical asset. And it is a beautiful aircraft to say the least. Currently taxiing out for departure, we have this American Eagle Embry Ear J-175 for Skywest Airlines coming in from Los Angeles International Airport. Now he's going to be heading over to the Phoenix Skyway International Airport. Glad to see both these doing very well. They're both brimmed pretty regularly, especially Phoenix so much so that Phoenix will be going up to two daily CRJ-700s next month. Stay on the lookout for that. Excited for that change. And I'll be really excited to pick that one. That'll be absolutely awesome. And taxiing right here, we have this American CRJ-700. This is on the behalf of, um, I about said Envoy, but we're not Envoy here. This is uh, SkyWest coming in from Austin Bertram International Airport. Uh, again, this route will be terminating early November, so uh, for a couple months there, but it makes sense during the winter. I think it's a good choice. They're gonna struggle versus Southwest. They do operate it, so why not wait till uh, March when we get a couple more people traveling? I think it's a pretty smart choice. Although Austin is warm during this time of the year uh, compared to other places, so kind of interesting, kind of not. I get both sides, but nevertheless, uh, I think it's the right choice right there. Uh, right here, we have no, new model three of three. This is the Coletta Charters, Boeing 737, that's at 727, sorry. Boeing 737 400. Uh, fittingly enough, this aircraft came in today, so that just proves the point of how much it's here. Coming in from Cincinnati, of course, on that non singulatory agreement uh, contract they have. Glad to see this aircraft here. Really great one, uh, really unique one for Jim that gets to make. I was really getting ready to make a custom of this. So really awesome to see that they just went ahead and did it for me. And now I have this and 727 to rotate between. So how cool is that? And the DHL 737-800, which still comes in quite a bit. So um, <clears throat> I'm not um, trying to be greedy, of course, but man, if we could get the uh, hybrid livery DHL, then this fleet would be done. So, but this is a huge step. This is probably the most common one out of all of them. So really glad to see this here. It's a really cool aircraft to see when it does fly in. <clears throat> sometimes it's late as well. Normally it's like a seven or eight o'clock arrival, but sometimes it'll come in at like 10. So I have got to see it a couple times, but really, really cool aircraft. Glad to have it in today's airport update. Beautiful new model and really glad to have it. <clears throat> also, if you're wondering where the runway section, the American Airlines maintenance facility and all that went on my ramp, I haven't got a chance to redo it yet and doesn't really fit this layout very well. So once it's redone, it will be back in the airport updates, but I need to get that uh, redone to really make it a flow with what the current display has. So that's why you're not seeing all the cargo aircraft and American maintenance, etc. So apologies about that, but trying to integrate all the various elements I can during this time. Uh, but hopefully it calms down here pretty soon. We'll talk about that more in a moment. This is Express Boeing 757-200 pretty coming in from Fort Alliance Airport. Glad to see how well they've been doing on the 7.5 with that. It's been a really cool change. So I've been really happy to see that. And lastly, we have this uh, Republic Ember 175 coming in from Washington, Reagan, DCA Airport. Now it's going to be heading over to Miami. So of course, Reagan doing really well. Glad to see that's been on the 175 and will continue to be on the 175. Really awesome Miami. Hopefully it will be daily sometime. I don't want to get too greedy, of course. I'm really appreciative of the Saturday service because getting pilots is tough right now. I think everybody that is really involved in the industry knows that. <clears throat> of course, there are many jobs in the industry, but uh, pilots are one of the most important, if not the most important. So, <clears throat> although there is certainly plenty going on. 
Okay, this is a really, really neat situation over here. Not for the best reason in the world, but the fact that we had it here was uh, very interesting to see this. I did get to see this in real life. Right here we have this Allegiant Air Airbus E320. It's currently getting its number one engine changed after I believe it was a Voyager, uh, some sort of uh, really big bird that uh, struck the engine on short final. Thank goodness it was on short final. Was able to conduct a normal landing, but obviously had the bird strike. The so number one engine got changed. This came in Wednesday night. It was carrying the Temple University football team to play Tulsa in which Temple lost. So uh, gold, go, go, Golden Hurricane, excuse me. But uh, unfortunately, this aircraft did have the, or, uh, the vulture strike, which is a really big deal. So in conjunction with that, uh, it, was, it was here a full week. It um, landed on Wednesday night and didn't leave until Wednesday night. Uh, but I did get to see it on Sunday getting the engine change, which is really cool. Really cool to see them uh, conduct this not in a hangar. This was a really cool um, piece. They put it on the Atlantic ramp, of course, because that's where it was for the planning to pass, or the football players, rather. And they brought in another Allegiant aircraft, the 319 particularly, to take them back after the loss. And now we have this Airbus E320, which got fixed up. So that was really cool to see in person. Rooting for that Allegiant maintenance base, or sorry, uh, operations base here. Uh, I was kind of kidding, but uh, it's certainly cool that they uh, changed this here. Uh, I'm guessing they drove in the engine because it took a week. So I'm assuming that it drove, they drove it in from somewhere, but really glad that they got back in the sky. I believe it was 208 November Victor was the tail number 207, 208, something like that. But really great to see this aircraft. Um, and it's really cool to see uh, what they've been doing there. So that's absolutely awesome. And absolutely love the, um, Absolutely love the effort right there. Two Beechcraft 1900s in today's airport update. This one's going to be representing, uh, we had an Alpine Air Express come in from Lubbock, Texas. It was really interesting to see that. So that's what we have right here. I need to get some customs going, particularly the next one we'll uh, take a look at. But very cool to see this aircraft in today's airport update. Sorry, that's a little tail heavy as well. But yeah, this is coming in from Lubbock. Very interesting to see this. I went over to the USA ramp, which I really would like to get a piece of and represent that. I might just try to do like five little displays and then during the airport update, I can just transition to all of them. We'll see. But uh, because it's going to be really tough to do uh, one to one tolls, I would love to. But nevertheless, looking really great here on that aircraft. Uh, first time of my knowledge that they visited Tulsa. So very cool to see this. And then next we have this uh, Beechcraft 1900. Uh, this uh, sub air example right here was actually parked over here on the Atlantic ramp. It's now the Atlantic ramp, Atlantic uh, Jet Link. Used to be Legacy, but they got bought out, of course. So great to see this aircraft right here on the ramp coming in from Wichita. It does that turn back and forth all day. It's really cool. So glad to see that they're doing really well and uh, certainly would love to keep expanding that with like a Martin Air Caravan and so on. So. And anyway, of course, we do have a couple private jets to finish up today's airport update. This is the NOM 300. It's currently coming in from Las Vegas, Harry Reid, and now it's going to be making a service day over to Eagle County. And last but certainly not least, we have this Learjet uh, 75 taxiing, or sorry, uh, accelerating here on runway 36 left. This aircraft's currently coming in right now from, excuse me, <laughs> getting after it right there. Uh, this aircraft's currently coming in from Spokane, Washington, really a long flight, and now we'll continue out to Destin after a little fuel stop action. I'm sure it could do it nonstop, but we'll just say fuel, why not? So yeah, that'll do for today's Tulsa International Airport update. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Started as a little long again. There was just so much to talk about. Uh, really, really big update today, and uh, got some changes coming up next month, so looking forward to that. Uh, really excited to see what's going on here between Tampa, Double Daily Vegas, two American Airbus A321s. Uh, I'm forgetting another change here. What was it? Uh, the United Max is absolutely fantastic, of course, but of course that's not going to be here after this update, but hopefully we'll be uh, getting some mainline back there soon. So looking forward to it. I think I covered all the news. I'll certainly uh, dive into it a little bit more next month since it won't be quite as, uh, quite as much depth for the year airport update excuse me but so excited with what's going on at Tulsa International Airport and looking very forward to the future very very exciting and uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic so I believe that encompasses everything for today's Tulsa International Airport update expect some more Tulsa content coming soon between uh, news videos and I would eventually love to get back to doing some spotting vlogs which I think in my new format it won't, wouldn't particularly be quite as much of a vlog but I'd at least like to cover what I've been spotting there for sure no question so I'll explore opportunities for that once uh, life calms down a little bit. Uh, it will be much better for October and December, particularly November will be a little bit busier, but I'll still get a full week off from school, so that certainly will help. So it'll, it'll all balance out, but looking very forward to the future, have some more time on my hands. But luckily we have a bunch of great content that has came from this busy time, and I hope each and every one of you are excited for it. So with all that being said, everybody, that'll do for today's Tulsa International Airport update. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. My name is Roger Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Stay safe, trust the process. Do 
what you love and love you do. My name is Roger of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Forgot one critical event, so I'm going to mention it real quick. Uh, Warbird weekend was fantastic with bombers and BBQ. Glad that it a uh, really great turnout. We had some awesome aircraft there, like the uh, the beach. And then we had, um, what was the other aircraft we had? The beach, oh, the B-24, P-51. Really, really great event. Uh, expect a video on that at some point in the future. Got to get that going at some point. But uh, nevertheless, we'll reevaluate and continue to uh, get on the uh, pace there as we have a bunch of content to come. So anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you guys soon as Red River Aviation is signing off.